Okay, so here we have our honesty as our reference. I have done a rough sketch of the honesty. You noticed and it's not exactly the same as the photograph. I just wanted to use this photograph to ins inspire us, okay? Um, but I've already changed mine and I've changed the scale slightly on some of the sides of the honesty here and here, okay? Because I want to make sure that if I, if I did this to the actual scale, it would probably go off the edge of the paper, okay? So it's more important that your design or the image that you're working to fits nicely on the page, okay? This is a, just a little study that I'm doing. So um, I'm not worrying about the edges too much. It's a good habit to get into. But if I did want to produce this as a painting, this space, I've only got just over a centimetre at the top here. So this, is, this um, honesty at the top is already in danger of being too near the top, okay? So ideally, I would probably make, I could make that a bit smaller or, as I say, you know, say if it was a painting, because you'd probably want to put a window mount around it and that's clipping it very close. So it's just something to bear in mind when you're doing studies or you're thinking about uh, doing work that you want to be able to put into a frame, don't have it too near the edge. So that is, that is quite close there and quite close there, okay. So the photograph reference that we've got, um, it's where the honesty has um, uh, dried out, and so therefore um, we are looking at um, earth tones. But I thought it would be much more fun um, to try out something different. So I am going to suggest instead that we do it with some nice purples and soft lilac colors. And perhaps, um, because if you look at honesty, before it goes off, it actually um, looks quite, um, obviously it's a natural green colour. And then when it starts to turn, it picks up some deep pinky sort of aubergine colours with the green or with the a nice soft golden colours. So my colour palette that I am going to be using is going to be like a nice aubergine purple colour with a hint of a soft gold in. So the colours that I'm going to be using are purple, Windsor purple or dioxide purple you might have. If you don't have purple, let me know and I'll show you how to mix it. So at the moment the purple that I've got is quite cool and quite cold. So this is my classic purple that I've got on screen. And it's quite a cold, cold colour, okay? And I want to, just, and it's, it's entirely up to you how warm or how cool you want your nice purpley colour to be. I'm personally going to warm mine up ever so slightly to make it a little bit more plum-like. So I'm going to pick up a little tap of alizarin crimson and I'm going to add it to my purple just to warm it up a smidge. But it doesn't really matter. Okay, so now I've warmed my purple up ever so slightly. So once you've got your aubergine up, the next colour I'm going to be using is a yellow ochre. And then we'll also be using a lead pencil. So the yellow, the yellow ochre, again, on the colour that we've got is quite bright. So this is my yellow ochre. And we will be softening this slightly. But at the moment, just for the market, we've just got to have it on the right hand. So on the left hand side, I've got my purple and on the right hand side, I've got my yellow ochre. So I'm going to start painting now. If you look at the study of the honesties, they're quite soft, quite muted in the way that they, um, the colours work. They've got some quite soft muted colours and muted shapes. So in order to get this really soft effect of lights going into darks and, and keep it all soft and light, we're going to do um, use a a glaze so if you want to if you want to create soft misty effects with watercolor the idea is to wet the area first with water and then you drop the color in okay and this is how you can get really nice soft effects so here I am and I am just painting the entire area of the honesty in water and I'm just delicately going around the edge, make sure you've got a, a really nice 
crisp edge to your honesty and there's a circle there for the seed head you don't you can go straight over that you don't need to worry about that because the seed is a darker um, darker shape you don't need to worry about missing that out okay so I've just glazed that entire area with water and it's got a shine to it and I don't I want to make sure it's just it's just glistening okay so and if there's an extra puddle I can just lift it out and then I'm going to scoop up some color so I'm now scooping up the lilac color the purple color that I've got and I'm just going to tap it in around the edges and it's going to run down and go and keep to the edges for me so I'm to, I'm trying not to I'm to, I'm to deliberately working to the to the edges because I want all of these nice soft edges there we go and it makes a really nice pretty effect and I'll just tap a little bit more in the corner there And then I'm just very gently just wiping it. Okay, like that. And then I'm just going to scoop up a little bit more purple and just going to feed it into the edge. Just giving it a little tap. Now you can do this as much or as little as you want to. I'm just going around the edges at the moment. You don't have to worry too much about trying to copy the um, photographic reference. My goal was to just introduce the colour around the edge and to have it slightly lighter or, or have virtually no colour in the centre. And then I'm going to pick up a little bit of the yellow ochre. And it's going to mix on the page with the um, lilac and that will soften it. And it's all wet, so it's just going to be very soft and very muted the way that it mixes. So you don't need to worry about it. So now I've got a really soft shape going. And then we're just going to repeat this exercise going further down. So again, just go glaze with water. And it's up to you. You could decide, well, actually, for this one, I'm going to have it more, um, more purple, less purple bit more gold in this one perhaps okay so we're going to do it in a fairly sort of random fashion and just enjoy letting the, all the colors mix but I am deliberately trying to leave um, some areas just as clear water and this is a great way of, of practicing your wetting wet techniques just by dropping in, um, dropping in the colour, so right, so we can, and you can just see it develop and decide, yes, I like that, or no, I don't. So here, I've just done an initial glaze, and I've decided oh, I want to improve that shape a bit and just bump up the colour a little bit. So you can just tap, 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 and you can feed in a little bit more colour in certain areas and not in the others. There we go. So I'm just tapping it in certain areas only. This one up here, we could do the same for this. This is still wet. It's still got a sheen on the surface. So if you decide, oh, I quite fancy a little bit of extra purple in that bit there. Okay. You can just tap it around the edges and it's going to bleed and soften around the edge just by just tapping it. So you're, you're feeding the reservoir of colour. Equally, if you decide, you know what, I would like to have some highlight. This is still soft, this glaze, so I can get a soft halo. So I can wipe this out, look, slowly. And I can wipe it out again, really travelling slowly like a snail. Okay. 
and I'm just lifting out ever so slowly, dragging it down. And because this is um, wet, um, hasn't fully dried yet, so this is a clean, damp brush. I've used my um, flannel to wipe it dry, and I can wipe out if I want to highlight and decide, you know what, I want to keep it light in the middle. Okay, just give it a little wiggle. There we go. So this one looks quite dark down here, so I just pull that down, leave that at it is. Okay. And then this one, just again. So as you're going around with your honesty, slightly change the colour. Make it slightly warmer, make it slightly cooler, you know, different consistencies. You'll find it much easier to get these nice, soft, muted colours if you pre-wet the area first with water. So I'm jumping over to this side now. The glazing again just with water. I'm going straight over the seeds with the water. I don't have to worry about painting around the seeds. So the whole area is filled with water first. I can spend my time making sure I've got it to the edge that I want. So I can see the sheen on it, okay, and then I can scoop up my colour and say, right, I want to have some colour around this edge here. Thank you, there we go, now it's starting to run for me. And this is what you want, we wanted to do that, because you can get some really quite interesting patterns. Um, I'm going to do a bit more around this side. And it's just, just running and just doing its own thing. Okay, and I'm not going to put any, anything, I'm just going to let it run. I'm not going to just let it settle. Don't worry about it. And then I might pick up just a little bit more colour. So I'm now picking up some yellow ochre. I need to mix that a little bit more. And it'll, as I say, it'll soften because we, so because the purple's in there, all that soft sort of aubergine colour. Because this yellow ochre is almost immediately going more of a softer golden brown colour. The way it's mixing. Just to, so it, it gives that little hint of it changing. And I'll just give that a little sweep. And again, so if you see any area, you think, you know what, I want to feed that a little bit more. Let's make that a little bit stronger. So I'm just going to tap, tap, tap. Tap, tap, tap on the edges. Let's have a little dark tap here at the, around the bottom. And because it's all wet, it's all diffusing on the page. Let's give it a little soft blush here. So I'm just making this up. Okay. Really doesn't matter too much. The main thing is to make sure you have a nice sharp edge to your honesty. There we go. So this one here we're gonna have Let's have this one quite pale. So there's going to be a tonal difference between these two areas here. This one needs to be lighter and this one underneath needs to be darker. If you look at the reference here, you've got um, silk uh, uh, underneath. So we need to emphasize that. So you can still do this one lilac or a mixture of the both. But we just need to make sure that it's not too, not too strong. Because, of, because, of it, because these two are overlapping, or they are in my study anyway. So I'm just repeating the same procedure. So glazing with water just as before. You 
until I'm happy with the shape. So just spend your time making sure you've got a nice, a nice shape to your honesty because the watercolor will do the work for you. It'll fill in that shape. But just spend your time making sure it's it's not too wobbly. So you've got a nice, nice shape. So I'm just going to scoop up a bit and I'm just going to bring it in there. Just sweep it in. Oh, it's gone quite pink on that one. And then let's bring a little bit of the colour in there. So I'm just tapping it in and it's just going to spread for me. Softening that edge. That stays nice. I might put it back a little bit actually. Give it a little tap. So let's just do a little swipe here. So I want to make sure that it's it at an angle. So I'm dragging it very slowly like a snail. Okay, and because it's all soft, it's going to um spread down here. It's just like a little soft halo, but it's not too dark here, which is what we want. we want to make sure this isn't too dark. And then we're going to need to let this dry before we do the next one over there. Okay. So I'm going to gradually keep continuing in, um, going down the page. So just keep your mixture going. I'm just going to build this gradually and slowly, bit by bit. So here we are here. So you can look when you're looking at your the photo reference that I've that I've emailed to you, you could, I suppose if you wanted to, look at look at the way the light's catching on it as a guide to how you can fill in your shapes. But as I say, it, it doesn't matter too much. Just enjoy filling them in. So this one's quite light, so I'm deliberately not going to colour this in too much. So I'm just tapping the colour around. And then I'm going to change again to the purple on the edge. And just make sure I make sure the edges of the honesty look really nice and sharp. Okay. So um, you can let this run and settle in the way that it's going, or if you decide, do you know what? I want a bit more halo around there. Just as before, all I'm doing is very slowly swiping with it, just to bring out a little bit of an edge to it. It's entirely up to you. You don't need to don't need to do it if you don't want to, but I just want to keep this edge soft around the top. So now over here, this one here is now the sheen has gone. Um, it's gone matte now, so that means it's safe for us to paint this honesty over here. So I'm scooping up my water, going over the entire area, filling it in, pulling it round to get a shape that I'm nice and happy with. Nice soft shape. If there's too much water, you just wipe the surface again with your brush. So you put it nice and shiny. And that will really help them soften and blend the way you want them to because we've pre-wetted it with water. Now let's scoop up some colour. And I think just because it's in shadow, we might just ever so slightly just cool this. Make this slightly cooler, but nothing too drastic because we're going to do this in the second layer. Okay. So I'm now going to 
bring this up right next to the color above. Bring it up. There we go. There we go. I'm doing this a couple of times. So the consistency of my watercolour paint is orange, orange squash like, herbal tea like. Well, this one's fairly flat in colour, but um, it's entirely up to you how much you want to do it. I think I'll probably still have it uneven. I might do a bit of extra tapping here because it's got a, some dark bits in the centre here. So I'm just tapping it around. And then I'm going to give the uh, highlight over here that I think will work well. So I'm just wiping very slowly with my brush, clean, damp brush, travelling really slowly. And I might do a little bit there. There we go. So travelling really slowly. So I'm just rolling around just shows you how much you can do. Try not to blend it too much because I don't want it to be too flat. So that's why I'm being a bit random with the way that I'm pulling it around until it settles. There we go. Just going to soften this actually. I haven't noticed that that's a really sharp line there. Get rid of that. Good, it's gone. And then we've got these two, and I should have done that at the top, shouldn't I? Don't mind. Come back to that one. So let's place this one. I'm picking up my water. Oh, there's no sweets round. I've got the shape that I'm happy with. There we go. And what should we do with this one? I know, let's make it more golden on the top. My yellow ochre is going more terracotta-ish because it's um, been contaminated by the um, by the purple. I'm just snazzing it up a little bit. And then I'm going to scoop up my lilac and put that on the other side. Like that. And we've got one over here. What colour should we do that one? I think we'll do a little bit of both for this one as well. Half one way, half the other. Just do a little bit of that on that edge there. And then we'll just start to let that settle a little bit. I'm just going back to my purple. And these two are still damp. So I can just go around the edge of this one. I'm just tapping it and it's beginning to draw a sharp edge. Yeah, that one needs a sharp edge there. There we 
go. A little bit too much because we're going to do a bit more with a pencil. And I know I've got a, I've got a very sharp brush with a lovely point, so this is easy for me to do with my paintbrush. But I appreciate that might be difficult for some of you if you don't have, if your paintbrush doesn't have a really good point to it. So I'm tapping in some stronger colour at the bottom of this honesty because I want to and a little bit at the top so I want to give it some more, more movement. Nice colour. So it's all very random. It's just a great way of, of, of watching what happens when you wet the area first with water and then drop in the colour. Now once this is starting, now this is beginning to settle and beginning to dry. You may decide on some of them, you know, perhaps, uh, you may decide, oh, oh, I've got one that's really dark and the others don't, the others are too light or I want to manipulate the colour a little bit. As long as you let the shapes get bone dry, there is nothing to stop you putting a second layer on over the top. If there are particular areas where you think you just want to boost that a little bit or sharpen it up a little bit, okay? So now that this is dry, just about. I'm then just going to glaze this one at the top because that's the last one that I haven't done. Okay. And then once we've done that, I'm going to show you how we can um, start to sharpen up and get some more information in on our my study. Okay. So here we are. I'm going right up to the top now. Filling it in with clear water. And I think I'm going to try and make sure I don't put my head in the camera because I think I just did that then. Okay, so I've glazed it with water, scooping up some purple, and I'm just going to drop it in around the edges. Just watch it run. It's quite fun to see it run a bit. I think lots of people, I don't know, um, lots, usually some students have, they sort of see it all run and panic and then immediately try and wipe it off. And the more you wipe your colours, sometimes it can make them go dull and dirty looking. So this, the fact that this is running and, you know, and spreading like that is a quite a pretty effect. And that's something, you know, you could do as an exercise and just deliberately see what it wants to do. I'm now just tapping in a little bit of the gold colour. Just on this side. Just tapping it in. And perhaps a little patch down there. Okay. You could just leave it like that if you wanted to. Um, it'll soften and do its own wonderful thing. Okay. And that's part of the enjoyment of it really. It's, it's watching it settle and see see what happens to it, okay? And then you can start to feed in more colour in it on the edges once it's beginning to settle. You get this really nice soft, soft effect, which I think um, looks good. So while that is beginning to dry, you have a couple of options. Because we're working to a limited palette, we've got the yellow ochre. We've got the, the purple mauve colour, okay. Um, Grey works well with it as a, um, a colour range. Um, and if you don't have, um, so if I was doing this botanical way, um, when we start to do all these sharp edges here and the outlines of our honesty, you could use a very small fine brush. And because we need a sharp edge and a sharp point, we would be painting directly onto the surface and we wouldn't be wetting it in advance. So we're painting wet on dry paper. Okay, so this effect here is, um, we call this wet on wet because we're putting wet paint onto a wet surface. Whereas now we want to have sharp edges. So we're putting wet onto a dry surface. Okay, so that's, that's the, one of the differences you can describe. If you feel you don't have 
a paintbrush that is that's got a fine enough point to it or you think your hand might be a bit un shaky um, you could use a lead pencil or you could use a watercolor pencil or if you decide that you wanted to be a bit more stylized you could even use um, a biro or um, a, a fine dark marker to get the edge that you want I'm just going to give you a couple of examples okay um, you can try it out first just by picking up your, your pencil and say right okay I'm going to pull this bit down ah one point I also forgot to mention because this is still wet some of these points here you've got these little lines in them you wanted to I could put this now with pencil or I can even use the edge of my paintbrush and it makes a scar or a dark scar in the shape I forgot to do this so if you pull it now you can um, get a dark line in it you could also go around the edge of it if you wanted to and if you and you see I'm just pressing and because it's, this is the end of the brush but you do have to do it when it's um it's wet and that's probably something we could have done in the others we can have a go again but that's a technique that you can use for um, outlining things so here we're going to need to get this looking three-dimensional we're going to need a dark edge here there and we're going to be selective there in order to get more movement in the way that our honesty will work it starts to come alive more once we're starting doing shapes like this okay i am going to pick up my sharp brush so i'm going to go down in size for a brush that i've got with a nice point to it and i'm just going to pick up some purple and this is going to be quite cold actually because I'm just using the purple on its own, I'm not warming it up with the alizarin. And I'm thinking, right, I want to have um, a sharp edge. Let's think, I want a sharp edge there. And I want a line to come in here. I want a sharp edge around here. And I'm going to carry it around and I'm trying to press really lightly so I can get it the way that I want it. And we're going to pull that out like that. And then I'm going to leave it a little bit down the side, picking up a bit more paint. And then I'm pulling it out. So I'm pulling it like that. And I'm just going to outline it, so that bit there, and then all of those bits, put a dash there, and a little dash there. So now we've got a nice outline. So for this one, I'm going to put an outline on the underside. Because the reference actually has a shadow cast underneath the honesty, but I'm just going to underline it instead. So I am going to leave a few gaps, otherwise it's going to look a bit strange. I'm just very lightly going around and I'm not constantly going around the, the shapes. I am leaving a tiny bit of a gap so I'm trying to make it a bit more visually interesting okay so I'm going to go up to the top here where I was showing you this effect and I'm just going to sharpen up a few bits there and I'll sharpen up a bit there and then 
and I will show you how we can top sharpen these up even more. Come down here. So this one needs to be an outline. But because this is such a pale shape, I'm not gonna although although the outline is gonna be again the lilac colour, I'm not it's not as gonna be as strong as consistency. So I'm just going around outlining that shape. And then I'm gonna stop at the corner. And I'm going to do a tiny little dash there and stop. And then, yeah, I want this bit to be strong, so I need to pull this down. And then pull that bit down there. And then again, stop. So we're trying not to have a, a solid outline all the way around. I'm trying to make sure that it's not necessarily that way. There we go. Right, well, I'll keep going. So I'm just going round, trying not to, and then we'll do the stem in the centre in a minute. So again, this on my reference, this is looking quite dark. So I'm just going round with my brush, painting onto a dry surface, flicking it out. So we've got this strong outline. Just going around, doing a little flicking. So by by lifting off in some areas and leaving it a little bit um, uh, unpainted, you're you're uh, making the shape more interesting. You're not killing it so much. So this is because I've painted hard, dark on this side. I'm not painting any any hardly anything down this side. It's visually looking as though it's sort of catching a bit more visually. So that's what I usually try and, you know, if I want something to look a bit more interesting, that's what sometimes I would try and do. Um, so hence why we've got dark weight over here, um, but on the edge I wouldn't be painting anything. So this is a real good technique for trying to sort of get more movement, more interest in the shapes that we're doing. So for this one, if I'm looking at the, my photographic reference, we don't need anything at the bottom, we, but we do need a little bit around this side. So again, I'm just following the edge of my shape with my fine brush, going around to outline it. And then I might do a bit darker, it's like a little dimple in the bottom, but not too much. I think we're just going to do this bit here. And then we'll let it fizzle out like that. Yeah, I don't think really that needs much more. And I think we'll do a dark edge around here. And then we've got a shape there that needs to be dark in a minute. And then I think we'll probably just do that bit there. It doesn't matter too much. It's really more important for you to, to work to the shapes that to say that work for you. I might do a little bit more than that one. So what we're going to do is we're going to paint the stem, but you will find it much easier if you're going to paint stems and, and lines, you're going to find it much easier to paint horizontally. It's much more easy for you to do this, whereas because I'm keeping this, I've got to do it more upright. So it's more, I'm, I'm doing it the more difficult way. So I'd recommend that you, you do it horizontally. Okay.
So I am going to pick up with some water. I'm going to do a little bit of wet on wet. If you wet your paper first with a little bit of water and follow your stem shape with water, so I'm doing it with my fine brush. Because we've 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 done this little line. Can you see it's raised? I don't know if you can see that. I've just I'm literally picking up quite a lot of water. And I'm literally drawing with water and I'm just gradually dragging my hand down. And then we're going to drop in the colour and by doing it this way, the watercolour is going to do the job for us. It's going to travel straight into this water that I'm just painting. And because I've painted it with water, it's dropping down. I've got a really lovely edge to my um, stem. Okay, and it's not it's not too wobbly. Okay, and that's the great advantage of doing a stem like this sometimes, because you know as soon as you pick up the colour. So here we go. Let's pick up this colour. So I'm starting with the yellow oak at the top, and if I just touch it at the top, okay. There we go. It's 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 travelling for me. Look, I can just tap it in. And this is where it's advantageous to have your work. There you go. Look, I'm just tapping it. And now we're at the end of our um, going down. I can start to change the colour and say, oh, now I want to pick up the purple. So I'm just tapping this purple into the water. And it's going to change for me. I'll just flick it down. Hang on. Let's scoop up more. There we go. So I'm just painting in the area where the water was. And it's spreading and running for me. So I'm getting this really nice edge that's not too wobbly. There we go. I'm now really feeding more purple into it. Uh, let's have some more up here. There we go. Let's have a blob of purple in there. There we go. And I can do a little, little flick of a stump there. And we've got, oh yeah, we've got um, something happening around here. So I am just going to flick it up like that. And let it disappear. Okay, and let's so let's paint this bit area here with water. Scoop up. There we go. I want that to come down. Oh yeah, that's going to go all the way down there. So by painting it first with water, you can you can see where your line travels. So that's one advantage. You can see where where you want the the stem to go or the branch to go because it's got that sheen to it, and it's in. And I think I feel it's an easier line for you to follow because I just tapped it. Look, and it's 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 running in for me. So potentially you could tap loads of colours in there if you wanted to. If you wanted to make, you know, I'm going to tap some yellow in at the top. But I'm just tapping it. Tap, tap, tap. There we go. So you get a much really nice, really nice sort of twiggy edge. And I think I think you might find that method or that way of, of painting twigs and stems. Hopefully you find it as, as an easy way. So I'm now I'm going to come down here and I'm going to do, oh yeah, there's a stem there. So picking up my brush, I'm going to drag my water down. You have an experiment and see what works best for you. You may decide, or um, actually, you know, if I do, uh, if I'm going to actually just directly draw a stem, then I usually do it with a very quick flick. It seems to be able to make, uh, make really nice 
shapes that way but if you feel you need to be a bit more a bit more careful or you're not quite so sure that um, painting it with um, the, the, the twig or the shape with water first so you can see see it sort of shining on the surface might might give you a bit more confidence so now we are look I'm tapping it now and the colour's just going to it's just travelling down for me. There we go. Oh, there you go. Look, really tapping strong there. Nice. Now it's weighted. That's what we want. And by tapping this really dark, it's now pushing that one forward, which is what we want. Okay, and we're going to do a little bit of, um, we're going to paint in the, the seeds, some of the seeds next, and then we'll probably finish off by putting in a slightly more um, strong layer in just some of the honesty areas if you want to. Okay, so we are working to restrict a palette of these golden colours with the... Um, moon colours. So I think if we use a nice sort of dark chocolatey colour uh, as a natural colour of the seeds, I think the colours will work really well together because they will, they're all harmonising colours. They will work well together. You're going to need a really strong dark brown. So if you've got sepia, use sepia. If you don't have sepia, I'd like you to start by using burnt umber. So when you put the brown so well, here is my burnt umber because I know not a lot, a lot of people have sepia. Okay, so this is my burnt umber. Okay, you could use that colour, but I want to cool mine down a bit more to make it look more like sepia. And then, why? All you need to do is go to an ultramarine colour, so a nice navy blue. Okay, which I've got on my brush, and as soon as I add it to my burnt umber it now goes dark even darker okay so i'm heading towards dark chocolate not quite okay and that color is getting closer and closer to sepia just gives it a bit more oomph okay so if i show you what sepia looks like so here is sepia okay so there is my sepia up at the top okay so that is sepia. So it's very much dark, but it's quite cool and quite cold. This is warmer still, this burnt burnt umber. But by adding navy blue to it or purple to it, look, snap. There you go. They both look the same practically, don't they? Okay, so if you don't have sepia, so this colour is sepia, this colour is burnt umber with ultramarine mixed, the two mixed together, and you get the same colour. All right. When you're looking at these little um, seed pods, particularly in, in this one here and in this one over here, you'll see that there is a sh um, because the pods is, um, are, are slightly rounded. There's a light here, and then it's dark around the edges, and the same with these ones. So we want to echo that. So. Because it's lighter, because it's got that soft halo around it, we need to do a wet on wet, just like we've done with these, but with these little seed pods. If we painted, if you painted the area with on dry first, you would have to immediately do a swipe to try and lift out the highlight, and it wouldn't, it just wouldn't look as good, and you, it just it just makes it more difficult for you. So this just this just take the stress out of it and make it easy for ourselves okay so let's start with um oh well we've got one up here haven't we you must warn me if my um so we're going to start with a seed pod here so i'm just wetting the whole area with water and i'm just going to pick up a small brush with the sepia color and I'm going to paint around the edge of the shape. 
I'm just going to go around the edge. So I'm not going to put any paint in the centre of our water bubble. You can tap it in if you want to. Okay. Because it'll start to go and spread to the centre. Okay, so there is my shape of my seed. And now I'm going to make it a little bit stronger. So I'm now going to have pick up some more concentrated paint. So that was quite weak. And now I'm I'm trying to make it even stronger. Okay. And I'm going to pick up a separate brush, so a small damp brush, and I'm just going to wipe it like that. Yeah. And then that way we've preserved the highlight. Now that it's settling, I can go around and I can paint it in a bit more around the edge. I want this to be really dark. So really strong consistency around the edge. So we're almost getting quite botanical in the way that we're painting now. There we go. So now I have a seed with a halo or a lighter area in the centre. Nice sharp edges around the edge. So we've got two over here, so I'll paint those two next. So, as I say, by painting it with water first, you're giving yourself a little bit of a break. You don't actually have to paint the water all the way to the edge if you don't want to, because we're going to have darkness around the edge. As long as you've got that little tap of water in the centre, okay, that's the main thing to make sure that you, you've got, then you've got plenty of blending time to get this seed the way you want it to be. So, I'm painting to the edge. In fact, you might find that easier because I am, um, by not, I'm getting a nice crisp edge around the edge, which is what I want. And then as soon as I start to go to the centre, it starts to soften straight away because this, this is the area that I've wetted with water. This funny sort of kidney shape seed. So again, I'm just pulling the paint in, and by because I've softened that area with um, water first, it just gives me that extra blending time to, to um, manipulate the shape until it's the way that I want it to be. In fact, this needs to be a bit better. There we go. And I don't need that halo quite so light, so if I just move it around like that, look. Now that halo is not quite so not quite so, so, uh, so light. It's more natural looking. Again with this one, I'm just going to tap in a little bit of water just to give me a bit of a head start. Scoop up my colour and paint my edges. There we go. Just picking up some more paint. And because it's softened, there we go, I've got a nice soft shape now. There we go. So I need to make this darker, so now I just pick up my pure paint. And I can pull it round. And that's the little tap in there. There we go. And then we've got another one down here. I'm just softening with water first, just to give me that extra blending time. Scooping up a nice bit of dark colour. 
It's quite dry around the edges. I'm just filling in the shape that I roughly want it to be. Oh, it's not meeting the water yet. Can you see how dry the edges are? The softness of water. There we are. It's finally meeting it now. And you see that because that's dry, it's not. Okay, that's better. There we are. That's getting the shape that we want it to be. And we've got that nice little halo that we want. And there's another one over here. So that one is going to work. So if you're doing this as an exercise and you wanted to introduce even more colour, you could, I suppose you could, um, entirely up to you, you could have pure navy blue in some areas or purple, so you just sort of tweaking the colour slightly, but you're, it's still natural looking. I'm just scooping up more colour now, and I'm just tapping it in. Just that. go back in around the edge of you're just feeding feeding the circle and the shape. And just now gently wipe that halo a little. Right, so let's go. Oh, we've got some that are not. That's it. The rest of them. We'll do a little, um, let's scatter a few more over here. Now let's make up some shapes over here. So we've got, yeah, I think it would still look good to have one around here. So if I use my HB pencil, I'm just going to draw a seed. It's entirely up to you. I'll have one around there. Should we still have that one there? Um, yeah, I suppose we could. And then we need some down here, don't we? We need definitely need that one there. So when you're doing these seed heads, try and because they are a dominant um, dot in your um, arrangement, try and visually look at the scattering and the spacing of these seeds so that um, you don't, uh, they're not too hap, we want them to be natural looking and fairly haphazard looking. But if you have, um, but I'm, uh, by having this, we've got a scattering here, we've got another scattering here, and then it's sort of coming down the page. So we've got a fairly even sort of scattering coming through. So it might make sense if I was looking at this, I've got a cluster here. This I'm going to have to be a bit careful with because I've got a straight line, dot, 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 which is on the photograph, but I think arrangement-wise this is a bit dangerous because it's making a line. I think it's probably going to be better if we put it up here, just slightly out there. I think it's going to be better if we just lift it up a little or we have it as an extra one so it doesn't look like a line. 
you see what I mean? So even though that's in the photographic reference, I think if I put that in, it's a bit of a plonk, plonk, plonk. Whereas just by moving it, or even moving it here, so it's behind the stem here, for me anyway, for my arrangement, I think if either I don't put it in at all, or it's going to be better there. Do you see my reasoning? And then this one here, we think, yep, yeah, that's fine. And then we've got this one over here, that's okay. And then this one, and then, well, do we want one down here? Or perhaps that's enough. So we could have one on this one here. So we say, right, okay, do we want to have one at the top? Or do we want to have one here? Because it's leaning that way, in that direction, I'm quite tempted to say, well, I think it might work quite nicely to have it there. It doesn't really matter too much. But by doing it that, we've, we've got a little balance of scattering going up and down through the, through the arrangement. So just bear that in mind. Whenever you're doing designs like this, don't be afraid to move things around just slightly so that this arrangement is stronger rather than face slavishly copying something that perhaps has a slightly ugly arrangement or slightly in, isn't scattered the way you want it to be because this is this is what botanical artists do all the time you know that, or I, I you know the amount of times i've tried to um photograph plants and study flowers and you know i've, I've looked at something and thought oh if only the head was just slightly tilted at a different angle or I really like the angle of the head, but now I've got a really ugly foreshortening angle of the leaves. So um, arrangements do get manipulated, believe me. They, they, you know, it's very rare that you, you know, you take a photograph of a plant and and the, and the arrangement of the flower head and the leaves is all perfect. It's quite often tweaked, or you know, the flowers taken from the angle, but the leaves have been manipulated or, or changed to make the arrangement more pleasing to the eye. Very much botanical thing that's done. Not enough water in this one, so I'm just going to put some water in it now. I'm just sweeping up some more paint to tap into it. So yeah, you get much better blending if you pre-wet it with water. I just didn't put enough in. But now I've, I've solved it anyway. So there you go. We're getting a much nicer balance of scattering coming down through the through the arrangement. I'm just going to lift a halo. Now it's a little, so it's a clean damp brush to get the halo. So the slight um, lighter area. Okay, there we go. Just tapping a little bit more colour around the edge. There we go. Happy with that. So that's beginning to scatter down nicely. So now we just need to do these ones down here. So I'm going to glaze this one with water. I think it's because my brush is quite small. It's um, it's not picking enough water. But this one's a bit more difficult in the fact I've got to remember that the seeds underneath the stem. So I have put water in on the left hand side and the right hand side of the stem but not in the stem. So that's what you need to remember. Otherwise you're going to lose your outline of your stem. So I've softened it with water to get that side. And I've softened it with water to get the other side. And now I just need to work at getting a nice edge. There we go. And then continue it on the other side. So we're going to have to have...
change that slightly. Let's have this, I think, turn a bit more there. Yeah, I think that's a lot better. It's looking too spherical at the moment, so what I'm going to do is pull this out there. And it will go that way. There we go. Pull that out. There we are. Now it's not so even. Right. So down here. So this one wetting with water. Wetting this one with water. And this one. I'm just tickling the edges just to make sure I get a hold of that. So looking at that, we've got quite a nice little scattering. I think we could possibly, should we put another one in? We could probably put another one in there. blaze with water around the left hand, the right hand side of the stem, and I'm pinching up to but not on top of the stem. There we go. So, looking at the screen, that looks like we've got quite a nice scattering of seeds. So, I'll just wait a few seconds for that to dry. And then we'll do a little bit more sharpening up. So we've got some of these edges to go on here. I'm just painting that on like that. Not all of them have got these long ones. That's the long one. Not, not on that one, not on that one. No, not on the others. So just this one I need to probably rub out with my pencil and make it a little bit of an, a nicer shape coming. So um, I will show you how to um, enhance it a little bit more and put some uh, second layers on, just on a couple of the um, honesty, just in case some of you decide that um, you need a little bit more to boost the colour a little bit more, make it a little bit stronger, okay? So what, if you're positive that your work is dry, you can go with a rubber and just rub out any access pencil marks. But please make sure that your work is very dry. So I've got a couple of stems that I could do sharpening up a little bit more. So now at the stage now we've decided, okay, are there any areas of the honesty where we want to boost the colour, where we want to add a bit more texture just to make it a bit more interesting, 
you know, any options like that, where you may decide, actually, I quite like it as it is, I'm going to leave it. So it's entirely up to you. Just so I can show you, I'm just going to show you how to boost, boost it with a different layer or, or make some areas a little bit stronger, just, just for argument's sake. So let's just pick on, which one shall we pick on? We can make this a bit more of a stronger contrast. That one I suppose could go, we'll leave it quite light actually. I could make a little bit more of a glaze underneath if you wanted to. So I'll show you how to do that. So I'll start up here first. So if you decide you have got a colour that you want to make a slightly stronger, okay, let's say that I want to make the top area stronger. As long as I wet the area first with water, I can then just scoop up a little bit more of my mauve colour and just like I did before, just drop it in. And because I've softened it first with water, okay, I can boost. I can boost that colour and I'm still going to get a soft muted edge because I've just repeated exactly the same process okay and then I'm just softening away with water okay so now I've boosted that top edge this area is, is the first layer or the original layer okay and it still looks all natural okay so we could say, oh, well, no, let's boost this a little bit up here. So I'm going to say, right, I want to do that edge there and a bit there and a bit more there, make it just a little bit stronger. You don't have to, I'm just doing it um, just to show you, just so you can understand how you can do a second glaze. So I'm now just picking up some more of the lilac colour and I'm just going to tap it in at the top. And a bit there. Okay. And as long as I go with my clean brush and just wipe around the edge with water, okay, I'm now softened that effect. And I'm, I'm pressing really lightly. And then I'm just fizzling out the edge so it disappears. And as long as you make sure you've got lots of water around there, it will very gently diffuse away. You've boosted the colour and you don't have a harsh line. So let's say, well, actually, I'm going to boost this bit on this side. So again, going over to my purple. And I'm just going to tap, tap in the strong colour where I want it. Just tapped it in on that edge. And you might think, oh crikey, that's gone a bit strong. So as long as I wipe on top of it or next to it with water, okay, I'm now diffusing that strong that strength. And I'm just using a clean brush with water on it, damp plus, and I'm just fizzling that away. So what was very harsh is now just gently diffusing. I've just got a a soft edge to it and away with it goes. Okay. And you can do this as much or as little as you want to. So let's have fun and let's do this corner here. Okay. Yeah. And we're just tapping some strong colour there. Just like that. Okay. And oh cracky, that's too strong. I'll use a clean damp brush and I'll just wipe the edge of it with water, okay? And that will gently diffuse away, okay? But I do need to make sure that I keep using water. So this is clear water, very lightly. It's not drowning in it. But because I put the water around and a layer over it, it's going to very softly spread without having a harsh edge. <laughs> So let's make this one a bit more interesting and say, right, okay, we've sort of done it roughly the way we want to, perhaps. But let's, let's boost this edge and this edge. You don't have to, but as I say, I'm, I'm doing it just to show you. Now if I just tap it again, tap it there, okay. And 
And then I'm just going with water around. It just softens that halo, just softens it so we don't get a harsh harshness to it. So we're just boosting or L exaggerating um, what we can see. I think this needs to be a little bit stronger, but because I want to make it look as though it's catching light, I'm going to do a, a glaze of uh, yellow with it or a dirty yellow ochre. So my yellow ochre is being contaminated with the purple that's naturally on my plate. So that's why it doesn't look quite as bright as the, as the pure yellow oak on its own. So if I want to make a soft golden halo with this, because it's quite a large area, again, I'm going to soften it with water. So just, just do an exact carbon copy as we did for, for layer one. Okay. And now I'm going to scoop up my yellow colour, scooping it up into the top. There we go. Just washing out my brush and I'm just wiping it with water. So now we've got a more of a golden blush to that honesty. Okay, and it's making it more golden and lifting it all up. So say, okay, well, that's, 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 uh, that's looking quite golden. Where else could we put this nice golden? Uh, we could put a little bit up here and perhaps a little bit here just to balance it out. Or alternatively, you could say, well, that's too strong. We'll work a bit out. It's entirely up to you. Because we've got this softness to it, it it's going to let us get away with it. So I'm going to boost a bit more up here. And say I, I, I like this yellow ochre and I'm going to make this more golden. Oh, look at that, doesn't that look pretty? Oh, yeah, I like that. Now I'm going to fizzle that edge away with water, clean water. Okay, so now we've got a nice golden glaze. Oh, honestly, but we can still see this lovely purpley colours. So let's do another little golden halo. I like this gold. And I'm just picking up the yellow ochre. So it's very, it's a light little touch. It's not very strong. It's quite, yellow ochre is quite a strong colour. Look at that look. That makes a really nice glow to it. And then I'm just doing it with water. Yes, look, it's boosting them up but even them more, isn't it? So let's go over here. This definitely can do with a nice golden glaze on it. So let's go with the yellow ochre. And we've glazed it with water first. So now I can put this nice, soft, golden glaze over my honesty. You can go with the seed, you don't need to worry because this, because the, um, the seed is dry, it won't run. So now we've got more of a golden scattering coming down through and you can you can do it for all of them if you want to or it's entirely up to you. I'll put a little bit more gold just on that corner there. What You do whatever looks best for the arrangement that you have in front of you. Okay, if you don't feel yours, yours don't need anything, then don't don't do anything if you're happy with it as as um as it is as it is. There we go. I put a little bit more on this golden edge just down here, and I think it doesn't really need much more. Might do a little bit more touching up. A little bit more gold in here.
just gives it everything that really nice warm warm golden glow to it really pretty So you can, if you feel you will have any areas that you want to sharpen up, as long as you've got a very crisp, sharp pencil, okay, you can go around certain areas, okay, and as it's wet, it, just by pushing on the edge of it, okay, you're going to get this nice crispness to it that you're after, okay, and you can do a slight score to suggest the seed pods. Okay, because it's damp, it'll let you do it and you can get some quite nice effects coming through. So that would be on there. You could even do the same if you wanted to with the seed. Look, I'm going around with my pencil if you wanted to. Now if you feel you can't, as I say, um, I could go around a bit sharper with my um brush but i it you need if you want to do this really you would be um you need to make sure that your brush is really really sharp i know some of you might not have a, sh a brush that's sharp enough so it's just to crisp crispen the edges up a bit more make it a little bit more perfect um, in the way that that goes around. There we go. So you could boost this even more if you wanted to with um, watercolour pencils. Do they around? Any way you wanted to, and then it goes. <laughs> 